All righty. I want to welcome everyone. Uh, looks like you guys can hear me good, so we've got a lot of information to go over tonight. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about county records. We're going to go look at some live uh, upcoming auctions. We're going to review county records online. Uh, so we've got a ton of information to go over tonight. Uh, tonight's a little bit smaller group than Saturday's uh, webinar because this is for uh, uh, members of the website. So as far as uh, as far as the questions, go ahead and ask the questions down in the question or the chat section. Uh, I'll try to address them as we go throughout the webinar this evening. Um, I'm sure that we're going to have some different questions about uh, some of the topics that we're going to be talking about. Uh, as we go throughout tonight's webinar, uh, we're going to go through and, and view some slides. And then for the rest of the webinar, we're actually going to get online. And we're going to start going through and uh, researching some upcoming auctions. We're going to look at some... Uh, some tax sale list and we're going to start reviewing property uh, and start going through some of those first steps that you're going to do as you start reviewing an upcoming auction. Uh, this is the uh, the initial due diligence you're going to do um, on each one of these properties to decide if this is something you want to do some more due diligence or deeper due diligence, due diligence to decide if this is a property you'd like to invest into. Uh, and so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, as I mentioned, it looks like we have a lot of people uh, coming in here a few minutes late. As you have questions, go ahead and ask the questions in the question section or the chat section, and we'll get to them uh, as we go throughout tonight's training. So let's go ahead and get started. Tonight we're going to be talking about the researching process, uh, especially that first due diligence process, the process of going through. Uh, last week we talked about reviewing tax sale list, uh, how to review the list, how to use the quick glance method to shorten the list down. Also some of the investor brackets in bracketing different tax liens. Uh, now we've got that list, let's go ahead and let's go through the process that you're going to go through once you've acquired that list uh, so that you can start researching individual properties on it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to always go to the county websites uh, to review the property records. Uh, if you go ahead and download a tax sale list uh, online uh, on the website for an upcoming auction or the over-the-counter list, uh, we're going to need to go through and research different properties on that list. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the county websites. It's really one of the greatest tools for us as investors uh, because they're going to have the information we need. They're going to have the assessor's office or the property appraiser where we can research property records. They're going to have the treasurer's office where we can research the tax sale or tax records. Uh, and so once we go to the county website, we're going to look for the department. Uh, sometimes it may, un may be underneath uh, government, and it's going to be the different departments within that county. So as, as we're looking at this uh, county website as an example, you can see the departments listed right there at the top. In the departments, as we click on that, it's going to give us a drop-down bar, and we can see the assessor's office at the very top and that's the property appraiser that's the what that's the uh, the department that we're going to use to research the property records uh, also we have the treasure down there below also many websites are going to have a search tool so if you have uh, problems trying to find something you can always use that search tool uh, sometimes I'll use that search tool if I can't find anything and type in tax lien or tax deed or tax sell and see if I'm able to pull up some good information uh, that can direct me to find additional information about the sale. So as I mentioned, most county websites are going to provide two separate web pages for the treasurer's office and the assessor's office. In fact, some counties will have completely different websites. You'll click on the assessor and it's going to take you to the assessor's own website or the treasurer's own website. Sometimes they'll just be different departments or different web pages within the same uh, web website. And so it will, re it will really just depend on the county. Uh, but the, as we mentioned, the first thing we're going to look for is the treasurer's office and the assessor's office. Now, the treasurer's office is going to have information like the county tax sale procedures. Uh, so regardless if it's a tax lien sale, a tax deed sale, that's where we're going to go to find information about uh, attending the auction, when the auction date is, the auction list. Um, we're going to find the date and location of the sale, the redemption periods that may be involved. Uh, many times we can find the foreclosure proceedings in the auction list. Uh, many times they'll also have a question and answer section uh, where we may have different questions that come to mind about how this county conducts its auction. That's a good place to be able to find that. They're also going to have any forms that are needed. 
in addition to that, they're going to have the tax records. And so that's going to be important for us as investors uh, in looking through and seeing, for example, let's say we're looking at uh, tax lien certificates or over-the-counter tax liens. We may want to see, is there additional tax liens on this property? So we've got a good idea of how many tax liens are on the property. And if we go to foreclose, how many different tax liens that we're going to pay off so that we can go through the foreclosure process. So those tax records are going to be very valuable to us as investors. The assessor's office is where we're going to find a county record. So we're going to find maps. We're going to find information about the lot size, uh, the site address, the legal description, the improvement information. And so that improvement information is going to be uh, especially pertaining to structure properties uh, like homes or commercial properties. So we'll see how many bedrooms, how many baths, how many square feet, when it was built. Uh, the assessed value, the market value, the zoning, the owner information. Uh, in addition, we, we're going to find the sales information. That's going to be a good clue. I'll always check to see the sales information because then that's the that's where we're going to be able to see who, when the property was purchased last and how much it was purchased for. In addition to that, some county records will include photos. Uh, we'll look at some this evening that have photos, and we'll look that others do not. And so we're going to review lots of different county records online uh, to give us an idea of different county, uh, the way different counties do it. So the partial search tool is a tool that we're all going to use uh, many times. If we're looking at online auctions, we're not going to use the partial search tool as much because the counties already have that kind of built in uh, to the online auction list. So when we click on the partial number, it's automatically going to pull up the property record. Uh, but if you're looking at over-the-counter properties, if you're looking at smaller auctions or auctions that aren't held online, you're going to use this partial tool to look up every single one of those tax lien certificates. Now, in some cases, in fact, I did this today, uh, you may need to erase the dashes so that you can pull up the property record. Uh, so, you know, with this, with this particular parcel search here, if we were to go ahead and type in that parcel number, copy and paste that parcel number, if there's dashes within that parcel number, it may not look up the record. And so what I'll usually do is just go ahead and try it with the parcel numbers at first, if it doesn't have a note that says erase them. And then if I'm not able to pull the property record, then I'll go ahead and delete those parcel numbers, excuse me, delete those dashes, and then look up the parcel number that way. So check both ways. If you're not able to pull the property, it, it may be the other way. You may need to add dashes. You may need to erase those dashes so you can pull up the property records. Now there's two types of tax sell list. Uh, there's the, your hard copy list, which is going to be like a PDF or an Excel file, and there's also the online auction list. The online auction list, <coughs> excuse me, are going to have links that you can look up the property records. So if we look here to the one on the left, we can see the different account numbers listed. That's going to be the parcel number, and if we click on any of those parcel numbers, it's going to directly pull up the property. So we're able to pull up the property uh, just by clicking on the parcel number. In other cases uh, where we have a hard list, uh, then we're going to go ahead and copy and paste that parcel number and search the parcel number that way. Uh, parcel search tools, you can usually search by parcel number, owner address, uh, address, uh, but usually the parcel number is going to be the easiest for us to, to use in distinguishing which properties are which and looking up properties. If you have a hard time pulling up a property using a parcel number, then, then try using some of the information, the other information that's available on the list. For example, maybe the owner's information uh, or the street address, um, and maybe you're able to pull up the property that way. So as far as the county record information, it's really going to contain the information we need. We're going to find the owner's information. These are going to be the legal owners that are on the tax deed as of now, before the foreclosure. Or in the case of a tax lien certificate, that's going to be who currently owns the property. Uh, we're going to have the legal description. Um, and this is the description the county assessor uses to describe the property. Uh, now, for many of us, you know, it may be a little bit difficult to read that legal description. Uh, and so preferably what we're looking for is a site address. The, of course, it's going to have the parcel number, uh, and that's really going to be like a fingerprint for the property records. 
a fingerprint for the parcel. So that parcel number is going to be kind of like a social security number. It's going to be the number attached to that property. Uh, they're going to have the site address, and that's something important to look for, uh, especially if you're if you're a new investor, uh, because you want to find a property that you can potentially drive to. Even though you may not drive to the property, you want it to have an address uh, so that you can search the property easier. Uh, the tax information, the assessed value, all this information is going to be contained in the county records. And I know we're kind of flying through this information, guys, and part of the reason is is because I want to spend a lot of time researching online records live. So we're going, you know, after we go through a few of these slides, we're going to get online, and then we're going to start going through and reviewing upcoming auctions and upcoming records. And here you can see two different examples of county records. Uh, the one on the right, we can see that it has a picture. Uh, the one on the left doesn't. Uh, but they're going to have a lot of the same information. You can see that they're going to have the, uh, the parcel number, the owner's information, uh, the site address, um, what the property, uh, any type of, of value, land improvements. Uh, in addition to that, uh, any type of structure improvements and, and what's involved with those structures. Uh, so depending on the record, um, there's going to be different different information, but it's going to have all of the same information. Uh, you know, both records are going to have the sales information when the property last sold. Both the, both of the county records are going to have the the address and the in the value. Um, and how many square feet the property is and the lot size. And so all that general information is going to be the same regardless of what county record we look at. So even though they may look different and one of them may have more bells and whistles, we're still going to be able to find out the basic information to give us a better idea if this is a property we want to research in, in greater detail. Also, of course, uh, some property records will give us additional information like uh, photos, and most property records will now have some type of map, map search tool. Now, these map search tools can be incredibly valuable for us uh, in, in researching the property lines and seeing where the property is located in, in, uh, in comparison to other properties in that area. And so if there's maps, and especially if we're really looking into the property, we want to review any of the information that's available. So if there's additional links that you can click on to get additional information in the county records, you you want to spend the time to go through and review that information because it's going to give you valuable information in making the decision. So quickly a review the property records are the number one tool that we'll use as investors. They're going to contain the, the valuable information we need, like the real estate records. In addition to that, the treasurer, the tax collector, is going to have the tax records. This allows us to review delinquent payments, if there's any other tax liens on the property. And then, of course, the maps. Uh, and many counties will have some type of map division, map program, where you're able to uh, do an interactive map search on that property. We can see here on the right this parcel information search. We can search by the taxpayer name, so the owner name, the street address, or the parcel information on the bottom. Uh, and so usually the first thing you're going to use is that parcel information uh, just because that'll that'll save you time in getting directly to the right property. Uh, because if you were to type John Doe in there, there may be, you know, John Doe may, o may own five properties. So then you're going to have to try to determine which property is the one that you're looking at. With the parcel number, it's going to take you directly to that property. So as far as our county record conclusion, many county websites are going to use different formats, and they're also going to have a varying amount of property records. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the county website to review all links and property records available. Also, if any information is unclear or additional information is needed, don't be afraid to contact the official, the county official, the property assessor, the uh, tax collector that's handling the auction. You can call them by phone. You can send them an email uh, to ask additional questions about uh, the individual property or the tax sale that's going to be taking place. And when it comes to county records, really practice is going to make perfect. The more you use county websites and records uh, search tools, the easier it's going to become. 
And so even as we go through and review different, several different county websites this evening and review different auctions that are coming up, uh, we're going to use that information to determine which properties we want to research more and which properties we'd like to bid on at the auction. Also, as we go throughout uh, tonight, we're going to use uh, some property value websites just to get us a better idea of the property. Uh, the assessed value, like we talked about in other trainings, isn't always going to be the market value uh, because the assessed value is really just uh, a tool that the county uses to assess real estate and property taxes within that area. Uh, and so the assessed value won't always be what the actual property value is. Many times it's going to be lower. So we may look at a property that has a $50,000 assessed value, uh, but as far as a market value, the property is closer to 80. Uh, and so generally speaking, the assessed value is going to be lower than, than the market value. Now that's not always the case, but generally speaking, that's the case. Uh, and so we're going to use some of these property value websites as we go through and look at different properties uh, just to give us a better idea of what that property may be valued in the area. Uh, we can also see comparable properties or sold properties similar to the property that's sold. And uh, in, in a future webinar, we're going to go over how to do a comparative market analysis. And so how to do a CMA, how to compare uh, pr other properties in the area that have sold and then compare it to that property that we're looking at. Uh, that way we can determine, you know, what the actual market value is. Uh, if you were to try to sell this property, what are properties very similar to it currently selling for? And that's going to give you a good idea because we want to know exactly what the property value is. When it comes to, when it comes to researching and bidding on property at a tax deed auction, uh, we definitely want to know what that value is. Otherwise, um, you know, we could make a mistake in how, how much we bid up the property. Uh, in addition to that, you don't want to overvalue the property uh, just for the sake of, of overvaluing it. Uh, you want to determine what is the real price you can sell that for. In fact, I'll usually go uh, on the low end. So, you know, if I do research and I see that a property is selling anywhere between a hundred to a hundred and twenty dollars per square foot within this neighborhood then I'm going to take it that that very low end uh, because I know that the, that's the bottom line that these properties are selling for so instead of saying well this property is a thousand feet uh, at a hundred dollars a square feet you know it's a hundred thousand dollars or whatever that that number would be uh, I'm going to go on the lower end of that because, you know, the last thing I want to do is overvalue the property, especially when I'm looking at bidding on the property. Now, with, with taxing certificates, it's a little bit different because you're not going to be acquiring the property outright. In most cases, you're just going to be earning a good interest rate return. But when it comes to acquiring property you're and, you, and doing a comparative market analysis on it, you want to be as safe as you possibly can. And so we're going to use probably Zillow.com. Uh, as we go throughout and review some of the properties this evening. Also a tool that I use every day uh, is Google Earth or Google Maps. Um, you can use the Google Earth feature. You can just go straight onto Google Maps and type in an address. Now what this is going to do is it's going to give us an overhead view of the area of the property, a satellite image. In addition to that, many times we can get street views. Uh, we can sometimes go th through the neighborhood on a street view and and look at the different you know the different properties within that neighborhood uh, we can see the condition in addition we can look and see when that property or when that photo was taken uh, and so that gives us a better idea you know if the photo was taken in 2015 you know you know it's going to have the actual date there you're going to know it's a it's a it's a newer photo if the property if the uh, photo was taken in 2013 well you're going to know it's a couple of years old uh, and so you want to get a better image of the property if you plan on bidding on the property in a tax deed auction. With tax and certificate auctions, really, if I if I see that there's a property there, the property looks good and there's a good value, uh, then I'm going to be I'm going to go ahead and purchase that tax lien because uh, you know it's just a safer investment. There's a 95% chance uh, that that property or that tax and certificate is going to be paid off, and I'm going to earn my interest rate return. So as far as as far as the buyer checklist or the pre-buyer checklist, as we go through and uh, review properties, 
we're going to want to take these different tips into account when conducting due diligence. So we're going to want to check the assessed value. We're going to want to check the taxes, uh, the minimum bid amount, the lot size, the improvement, and the condition of the improvements. Uh, also, when it comes to tax deed investing, we're going to want to check for any uh, type of risk, uh, environmental, easements, bankruptcy. And, and some of these won't won't apply. For example, you know, usually with bankruptcy, with tax lien auctions and tax deed auctions, they're going to go ahead and take those off of the uh, off of the list before the auction. Uh, but I do want to put that up there as an idea. Now, I've actually purchased a tax lien certificate that didn't have a bankruptcy bankruptcy when I purchased it, but did get a bankruptcy after I'd already purchased the tax lien. In fact, it was on a, a single family home up in Wyoming. Uh, but with that with that bankruptcy, I didn't lose my money. Uh, what happened is uh, they had to pay me payments. Uh, and so it, instead of getting paid off all in one sum, I got payments over the next year. Uh, and so every month or every two months, I would get another payment on the tax and certificate that I purchased. And so even with bankruptcies, you know, uh, the worst case scenario, you're not going to lose your money. Uh, you know, they're just going to, depending on, on how it's ruled, they may just set up some type of payment plan. And so you're still going to make your money back. Also, as we're going to review other resources like property value websites like uh, Zillow, uh, we could do additional. Uh, we could do a CMA on the property, a comparative market analysis. Uh, we're going to use Google Earth. We could also get real estate opinions from agents, investor, um, a coach, anything like that. Uh, if if we're doing uh, tax deed investing on a particular property, we may do a title search on a property. Uh, in addition to that, we may do an on-site evaluation when possible, especially if you're investing in some type of structured property. Uh, at a tax deed sale. So with a tax and certificate, I'm, I'm not going to do an on-site evaluation uh, in most cases. In most cases, you know, I'm just going to check the value because with a tax and certificate, you're really looking at 1%, 2% of the property's value. With tax deed investing, it could be 20%, 30% of the property's value. Uh, and so obviously, if you're purchasing the property and acquire the property, you're going to want to do more due diligence. With tax and investing, as long as I am assured that there's a good valuable property there, that, the, that uh, there's value with the property, then it's usually going to be a safe investment. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to go online. Uh, we've still got uh, a lot of time, so that's uh, I wanted to get through this quickly so that we could spend uh, a lot of time looking at upcoming auctions. Uh, there are several different auctions that I want to review, different property records. And so we're going to go ahead and do that. Let me go ahead and check the questions real quick. Okay, perfect. So what we're going to do now Okay. These are here are some of the different counties that I want to go review. Uh, the first county that we're going to look at is the Brevard County Tax Deed Auction in Florida. I'm also going to go ahead and pull up our Google Maps. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull up Zillow as well. That way we have some tools ready as we go through and research some of the property. Uh, so we can see here's the online auction website. This is the tax deed auction. Uh, if you go to Secrets of Tax Lien Investing um, and you go to the online auction tab, uh, we're going to have all these different auctions. And so you can click on Brevard County and you're going to be taken to the auction page. So we're, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on the auction calendar. We can see that there's uh, auction coming up uh, actually tomorrow. It uh, looks like there's 53 properties available. So there's really only one property on this particular uh, 
this particular auction that I want to look at, and then we're going to actually look at the July auction in Brevard as well. Uh, but uh, this is one property that I just found a little bit interesting. Uh, we can see it right here. It has an opening bid of 149000 and it has an assessed value of 755000 We can see the address listed right here. And then also right here is the parcel number. So when I talk about online list or, or online auction list uh, as well, they're going to have the parcel number that we can go ahead and click on, and it's going to pull up the, the property details. So with, the, with these type of lists, we're not going to actually go to the parcel search tool and type in the parcel number. We're able to just click on the list and pull up the information. So we can see here uh, that back in 2012, this property was valued at $1.4 million. Uh, we can see that it's 149 acres. And then if we look up here at the name, it looks like Royal Oak Golf Club and Company. As we continue to scroll down, we can see that this property back in 1976 was purchased for $5.5 million. We can also see underneath the building information uh, that there appears to be some pretty big a pretty big uh, structure on this property. We can see that uh, underneath here, underneath the building areas, we can see that there's a property uh, that's 19,000 square feet. Uh, we can see that there's some type of open porch with about 2,000 square feet. And then below that, it uh, looks like there's another property that is about 2,660 square feet. Down here below, we can see some of the extra features. And we see golf course, uh, covered patio paving. We can also see a pool. And so what we're going to do now, you know, just looking at this information, looks like it's some type of golf course. We're going to go ahead and take that property address, and we're going to go ahead and search it on Google Maps. So we can see that the property is located right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on the Earth view. That way we can see the satellite image of the property. So in looking at this property, it does look like it's some type of golf course. And we know from the property records that this property is 149 acres. Uh, so, you know, we're not just looking at some small property here, we're looking at this entire golf course uh, because that's approximately probably about how many, how many acreage there would be within this area. Uh, and so we can see the different, you know, the golf course listed down here. We can see the property here. Here's that pool that we saw in the county records. Here's that clubhouse that we saw. Uh, maybe some of the additional smaller structured properties. So we can also go down here and look at the street view. So here we can go ahead and see the, the clubhouse. If we were to go down here further, uh, we could see part of the golf course. And so we'll have to see if this actually goes to the tax sale. It may be paid off before, before it goes, but this is actual golf course coming up for auction at a tax deed auction. Uh, and so that's something that's pretty unique. You know, I don't... Sometimes I'll see uh, um, nice uh, single-family homes on a golf course, but very rarely have I seen a golf course coming up for the auction. Uh, so this is something I'm going to take a look at uh, as the auction uh, nears, and uh, well, I guess really tomorrow, uh, and see what happens with this particular property. Um, you know, chances are it's going to be uh, sold. We can see here that it's Royal Oak. Uh, golf course and so we could do a little bit additional information and find out about the property. So that's kind of a unique property, uh, probably something that's out of many of our uh, price points, especially if this goes to auction, I would imagine it's probably going to get some other bidders on it that are looking to, uh, you know, to make some good money. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click back out of this auction. We're going to click on July. We can see here in July that there's an auction on the 23rd 
uh, there was when they started the uh, list there was 48 properties available right now there's 39 properties so we we can see that some of those properties have redeemed uh, before the auction if we were to look here at these different auctions we can see that it started out with 63 properties and uh, the day before the auction there's 53 so 10 of those properties the property owner came in they redeemed the the delinquent taxes and they paid off their tax debt now when they paid off their tax debt the investors to own tax and certificates on that property were all paid they were all paid uh, their interest rate return and their money uh, their money back and so when a property owner comes in and pays off the delinquent taxes before the auction then if we're a tax lien investor on that property we're going to get paid back at that time if the property goes to auction in Florida and sells then we're going to be paid back after the sale has taken place and so the tax deed investor that purchases that property will essentially pay off the delinquent taxes and pay our interest rate return so our uh, all of those delinquent taxes and the penalties the interest that's earned will be paid by the tax deed investor in that opening bid amount so when we're looking at an opening bid amount that's going to include any of the delinquent taxes in addition to that any of the additional penalties that are owed on the property so we're going to go ahead and click on this July 23rd property uh, July 23rd auction and we're going to look at the tax sale list now as we look at this tax sale list we're going to see uh, some information on it. First thing we're going to see tax deed, the case number, the certificate number, the opening bid amount, and then also the property address and then the assessed value. Now, as we're going through and looking at property, it's pretty easy to tell which properties you want to do some research on. Uh, this property, we can see it has a $4,000, a $4,800 opening bid, has an assessed value of $21. This property below this has an assessed value of $7,000, uh, uh, opening bid of, of $1,700, but has an assessed value of $3,700. Now, this property does have an address, which means that we can see what it is, but what we're looking for is, is a property with the, the lowest opening bid and the highest assessed value. And really, what we're looking for is that assessed value. So, you know, that, that opening bid uh, is going to make a difference, but we want to, you know, keep that anywhere between 20 to 40 percent um, as far as what we're bidding uh, of what the property may be worth and so let's go ahead and let's click on a couple of these real quick and we're going to review the property records so with this property first up here at the top we're going to see the site address we're also going to see the size of the property it's 0.14 of an acre we can see that there is some type of structure on this property written down here at, at the bottom we can see it was built in 1963 and so what we're going to do quick is just because this is a structured property, even though it has a kind of a low assessed value, we're going to go ahead and check the property out. So we can see the satellite image right here. Here's where the property is located. Uh, here's the property. We're also going to take that address and use it to do a Zillow search. And as we scroll in, we can see that here's the property either right here or right here oh no never mind right here and it looks like it's some type of mobile home property and so that's probably the part of the reason it has a lower assessed value uh, but let's go ahead and check it really quick on Zillow just to see what Zillow thinks the property is worth so we can see that it has an estimate of 57,000 we can also see that the property owner is is currently trying to sell the property uh, and so they're trying to sell it for $29,000 cash. Now, part of the reason I'm sure that they're trying to sell it quickly is so that they can pay off those delinquent property taxes and they're not going to lose all their money into the property. So when a property is like this for sale uh, or was for sale, at least we can find a little bit more out about the property. You know, the owners made some improvements, brand new carpet, located near Indian River, four bedroom, one bath, and a half bath so you know two baths eating kitchen living area partially fenced with good yard fix up for a rental investors check this one out so we can see that even though this property you know isn't valued very very high we know it's probably worth about 30 grand uh, and so looking at the property we'll have to make a decision is that opening bid amount worth 
the actual property and that would we would do that with additional due diligence but even though the opening bid amount and the assessed value isn't as far apart as I'd like it uh, depending on the quality of the property I may do some additional due diligence now we can see here down at the bottom the Im image capture was in 2011 so this is an older picture this property may be improved by now it may be cleaned up or it may be it may be in worse shape that's something we'd want to check out before we ever bid it on this property and we can see that it sold back in 2012 so this pr this picture of the property was actually taken before the property sold so if this property owner has done a bunch of work on the property it may be in a lot better condition than we see the property right here uh, you know there may be additional things done to it and so we could do uh, you know if we were to be if we we're interested in this property we wanted to participate in the auction then would have somebody drive by and take a photo of the property and we'll get into some of the different ways that you can do that uh, in in next week's webinar as far as uh, as far as having somebody take photos of the property uh, there's several different methods you can use in fact I've had students and investors that have just hired somebody on Craigslist you can PayPal them the money very easily easy and then you know just having a college student or someone like that go out and take pictures for a couple of hours you know say I'm you know I need some pictures taken I want to pay somebody fifty dollars to go out and take pictures uh, there's plenty of people that are looking to make a little extra money and if they can go out with their digital camera take a few photos send those photos to you and you can you can uh, send them some money by using PayPal account for their services that's a pretty easy way uh, in addition to that you can work with real estate agents or other investors in the area if you're bidding on property uh, that that in an area that you don't necessarily live on now with tax lien investing I'm going to have a different strategy I'm not going to be worried necessarily about uh, about driving by the property uh, because what I'm really looking for is value so let's just say for example that we're looking at this property right here let's see what the property taxes are We can see also over here on the on the side are different things that we can click on. Oh, that's nice. So we can click on a photo of the property right there. We can see a photo of the property. Uh, we can click on the building drawings and see what the property looks like uh, as far as that's concerned. But what I want to do is I want to go ahead and click on taxes. Oh, uh, it says the account is currently not available for viewing. That may be because uh, it's going into the tax deed process right now. Uh, but there's different things that we can click on here. Uh, bird's eye view. To get different information, a different look at the property. So we can see the bird's eye view right here of, of this property. So let's go ahead and let's look at some more properties. So as we're going down this list, what we're essentially doing is we're scanning the list. We're scanning the information that's available and we're determining if it's a property we want to do some more research on. And we're all going to have different investment strategies. Some of you may be looking at, at, at land. And so if you see a property here with an, you know, you may not, you may have only a thousand dollars to invest, but you want to invest in tax deeds. Then if we saw an opening bid amount here for a thousand on a, a property that had an address and maybe it was worth twelve thousand, we may go ahead and research that property because there's a possibility that could be some type of good building lot. Uh, and so in that scenario, we may look at the property. Now with this, as we go through today, I'm primarily going to be looking at, uh, or we're going to be looking at uh, structured properties. Uh, just because there's going to be more record information available uh, but you're going to go through these same strategies regardless if you're looking to invest into uh, you know building lots or or high price real estate uh, either way there's money to be to be made on different properties so as we're going through we can see that there's uh, several different pr types of property here and actually a lot of these assessed values in Florida are lower than the actual market value is and uh, there are several different reasons that is, and it's, it's really happened over the last few years. 
to lower some of the property taxes on these properties, especially if somebody's not living in the property, so that they can at least bring in some type of property tax. So just, just to check it out, let's go ahead and click on this one quickly and see what it is. So we can see that this is you know, 0.23 acres. Uh, we can see uh, the assessed value at 3,700 right here. We can see when this property is sold down here below. And let's just go ahead and search it very quickly. And we'll see what type of a piece of land it is. So we can see here that the property is located right here uh, on the, uh, the satellite image. So we can see that there is actually some pretty nice homes in the area. If we click here, we're going to go ahead and get that street view. So we can see a nice home here. And uh, the property that's coming up for auction is this building law right here. Now, uh, we'd probably want to check and see what property values are actually selling for, what lots are selling for in this area. But it's very possible, uh, and this is something you'll see sometimes as you look at the results of online online auctions, where the assessed value on this property may be only 3700 but these lots are selling $15,000 all day long. Uh, and so for an investor, that's the property that you may do some additional due diligence on. We can search that address and we can find what properties have sold recently, uh, you know, what type of lots have sold within that area, and that's going to give us a good idea of what these properties are worth. So let's go ahead and continue to scroll down. We can see another property here has an $84,000 opening bid. It has an assessed value of uh, $331,000, but there's no address. So with this particular property, without even clicking on it, I'm going to bet it's some type of large piece of land uh, because the assist value is so high, the opening bid's high, and there's not an address on the property. So if we click on it, actually this may, this may not, it says Harvard Apartments, but I don't see any uh, structure value. Let's go ahead and take a look at the photo and see, no. Let's look at the bird's eye view. So we can see the apartments over here across the street. This is probably this big, huge lot right here. Uh, we can see it's one, one and a half acres. So it's this lot right here across the street from these other apartments. Uh, so with this particular piece of land, if, if you were going to do apartments, this would probably be a pretty good area to look into. But let's continue to scroll down. Uh, we see another property here with an $80,000 opening bid, but this property does have uh, a, a address. Let's go ahead and click on this one quickly. So we're going to see that there's uh, building information down here below. We're going to see this, this property was built in 1956. We can see it's about 1,200 square feet. We can also see it has uh, outbuildings, uh, park mobile homes, additional outbuilding. What we're going to do, of course, we can see the property value here, $275,000 uh, assessed value. Uh, so it has a very high assessed value. We can also see what it sold for. We can see it sold back in 1991 for... 267,000 in 1996 for 200,000. And then of course we have that address right there. So we're going to click on the address quickly and we're going to search this property as well. Okay. So with this property I can already tell what it is. Uh, it's some type of mobile home park. I think this property was actually on the list of lands. I looked at it before. I think this property had tried selling an auction before and didn't end up selling. So it's this Eagle Eagle One uh, mobile home park. It looks pretty run down. 
Uh, so for the beginning investor, this is definitely not something that you would look at. Uh, but for a seasoned investor, it may be something you do some additional due diligence on. And the reason I'm showing you these different types of properties is I just want to give you an idea of the different types of real estate that you can find. Uh, you know, here, even though this mobile home park definitely needs some work, we found a small mobile home park. We found a golf course for sale. Now let's look for some single-family homes. So this one here, we can see 4,000, 14,000, but it doesn't have an address. So I'm just going to continue to scroll, click on the next page, and now we see a property here with a $3,300 opening bid, a $30,000 assessed value, and we also see the address here as well. So let's go ahead and click on the parcel information. We'll scroll down here to the bottom, and we can see uh, this looks to be a condo built in 1989. We can see it sold in 2001 for 35,000. Let's see it's on uh, 0.11 of an acre. So let's go ahead and take that address and let's see what this property is. We know it's some type of uh, structured single family home, uh, condo building of some sort. And in looking at this property, now it makes a little bit of sense. I couldn't see any of the like how many bedrooms how many baths within within this information the only thing we could see is that it was just over a thousand square feet and then looking in at the the google map or the google uh yeah the google maps or the google earth view i'm gonna be able to find out a lot more about this property and it looks to me and we'll have to take check out the street view this is actually probably some type of commercial condo. So let's go ahead and let's pull up here a little further. And so we can see that there's, you know, some type of, of back door here. And if we're, let's go look up here a little bit. And we can see the, the door fronts here. So what we're looking at within, within this particular tax deed is some type of commercial garage some type of commercial property, a commercial condo. So these are probably for your heating and air conditioning businesses, your personal shops, anything like that. That's probably what they use these type of properties for. Uh, and we can see that there's quite a few of them. This looks like to be uh, a neighborhood full of different types of small commercial buildings. But we can see, you know, a Hertz sign over here. So this is definitely within a commercial area. And at that opening bid amount of... 3300 this very well may be a pretty good property. Uh, we could look online or uh, and to see what properties like this are selling for commercial wise. Um, we're not going to be able to look it up on, on Zillow because Zillow is not going to have commercial properties, but we can still do a comparative market analysis and see what this property is valued at and then decide what we want to bid for it at the auction. So, but in looking at that opening bid amount versus the assessed value, we're looking at about 10%. Uh, so, you know, that's really where we want to start start at, uh, and depending on the property, we're going to want to bid anywhere between 10 to to 30 percent, uh, usually. If it's a real nice property, maybe it'll go up a little bit higher than that, uh, but, you know, that opening bid amount to assess value, we're looking at a 10 percent, so that, that's going to be a pretty good bid-to-value ratio. We may go up to 20 or 30 percent, depending on each one of these properties. Now, the general rule is the higher value the property really the higher you can go up in that percentage amount. So, you know, with a, with a, with a property that's worth a million dollars, you may be willing to pay $500,000 for it because you know you can make $500,000. But a building, a property that's worth $30,000, you don't want to pay $15,000 because uh, you don't know what type of expense may be in the property and, and you may be only able to make five or $10,000 on the property. Uh, and so, as that property value goes up, then you can increase that uh, percentage, that bid to value percentage that you actually pay for the property. We can see another property below this one right here has a $32,000 opening bid. So that's quite a high opening bid. And we have the property address down here below. So let's go ahead and click on that parcel number. We're going to see... Uh, 
This property was built in 1983. Let's go ahead and search what the property is. So we can see this is some type of uh, structure property there. We can click down on the street view. It's most likely this property right here. Let's go ahead and check So Zillow estimates this property to be worth about $102,000. We can see it's 822 square foot condo, two bedroom, one bath. Doesn't necessarily look like a condo, but maybe it's an association. Very well could be an association. So in looking at that assessed value, you know, at $32,000, even though that's quite high, uh, if the property is valued at 100, you know, that makes it about 30%. So we'd do a little bit more research on this property to make sure that it's going to be a good buy, that it's clean property, that's in good area. But even at that high opening bid amount, there still could be plenty of profit on this property. There could be, you know, $60,000, uh, $70,000 worth of profit in this property. Uh, below that, we see even a better bid to value ratio. So we see that opening bid amount, 7000 uh, 900 and this assessed value is 9600 let's go ahead and click on this property so we can see uh, this is some type of condo unit and I'm not quite sure if this is a single-family home either this might be some type of commercial property And we're really going to go through this process as we re research any of these uh, these tax sale properties. Oh wow! Well, we can see that this is this is a commercial property. We can see some of the different uh, the different stores that are located within this area, and it looks like that this property uh, is a supercuts, or at least within this condo, there's a supercuts. It's right there on the property. 5410, 1950 Rock Wedge. So it's probably within this area. You know, we do a little bit more research on a pro the property, but it very well could uh, be a good property to, to invest in. We can see that it's a new property. It was built in 2008, and it's within the Tuscany Center condo. So this is probably this uh, this shopping center and uh, commercial center right here. So we can see a Walgreens, uh, some type of funeral home. Also looks to be really within a good area. This is all newer subdivision, newer construction. So this is probably one, if I was looking for a commercial property, that I'd do some additional due diligence on uh, because it looks like to be in a, a newer, nice area. Here's another property, $5,000 opening bid, $71,000 assessed value. We can see this property was built in 1955, and it really looks to be like some type of single-family home. So we're just going to go through that same process we've been going through. We 
can see the property down there below. Let's see if we can pull it up on Zillow. So here we've got a photo on the property. Uh, we can see that it's currently for sale. I'm sure the property owner is trying to uh, sell the property uh, before the tax deed auction. We can see photos of the property inside, which, which makes it nice. It looks like it's really pretty clean, even though it's a little bit older. It looks to be a, a pretty clean property. So in looking at that opening bid amount of 5000 would this be a great property? Uh, well, it, I definitely think it'd be something I'd be interested or in researching. Uh, we see the, from the recent photos that it's pretty clean inside. Uh, the guy's trying to sell it for $50,000 cash right now to try to sell it before the auction takes place. So even if we say that it's only worth $50,000 versus seventy-one or or uh, or 147, the Zillow says it is. Even if we just say that it's worth 50,000, that still has plenty of room for profit, especially when we're looking, at, you know, we're looking at a 10% bid to value ratio. Even if you spent $10,000 for it, or even up to 15 or 20, there's still a lot of room for turning around and making 30 grand on the property. Uh, and so that, you know, that would be a pretty good example to look at. We see another property here with a $5,500 opening bid and a $90,000 assessed value. And I don't want to spend all of our time today looking at uh, this one particular auction, but there there does seem to be uh, some, some pretty nice properties coming up at this sale. So we can see this little single family home right here. Let's go ahead and... Uh, See what Zillow has to say. It says it's worth 115,000. So another a pretty great property opening, you know, with a $5,000 opening bid, has assessed value of uh, 90,000, has a market value of over 110. There's actually quite a few nice little properties here. And we could just kind of go through this same process. I don't want to spend all day going through it, even though uh, I enjoy going through it because, you know, some of these properties look like they're pretty good. There's another nice property. You, know, you can see it's a very clean property. Let's check this last one out, and then we'll go ahead and look at some of the other auctions that are coming up. So this property valued at 106000 Uh you know, we're looking at a $5,000 opening bid. Uh, we see another property here. It really is just a lot of nice single family homes uh, within this particular auction. And I do a lot of an investing in, in Florida tax deeds myself. Um, Another nice uh, newer newer property. We see the for sale sign out here front. Uh, so this very well could be purchased by an investor that hasn't been able to sell the property. Um, there's there's several different reasons why it could go to the tax sale. Let's go ahead and see what this property is valued at. So we're looking at 129,000. And if there is any notes on it, it's definitely, you know, as you look up on Zillow, if there's any notes, it's worth it to go through these notes and review them. Uh, so we can see here's a $198,000 opening, opening bid. That's quite high. Go ahead and see what this property is. So this looks like to be in a very, very nice area and a nice big single family custom home. So here, here we're looking at this property. This property right here is coming up for the tax deed sale. Now, of course, the opening bid is $200,000, so that may be out of uh, 
you know some of your some of your reach uh, but this you know I think just even in this auction we've seen many different types of properties coming up for auction uh, we've seen a golf course we've seen commercial properties uh, you know a newer commercial even a small condo a workshop we've seen single-family homes and we've really seen a large custom home now as far as value let's go ahead and see what this property is so even it this is an example you know is you is the property goes higher in value you have more flexibility in purchasing the property for a higher price so we can see that this property is you know just under 5,000 square feet and Zillow estimate estimates it at uh, about seven hundred and seventy thousand dollars I'll look at this Google Earth view as well because it looks like there's you know some type of uh, indoor pool here within the back so what I was saying is even though this property has you know as far as the opening bid amount versus the assessed value we're looking at nearly 50 percent uh, opening bid amount versus the assessed value now if we if we uh, we could probably put a couple of hundred grand on top of that 427 uh, just based on the Zillow values of prices of properties that have sold within that area. Uh, but this is where you can you could spend $200,000 on this property because there's so much room for profit. As we go down into, into smaller properties, there's going to be less room for profit. So you want to purchase those properties at a, at a, at a smaller uh, bid to value ratio or the purchase price to value ratio we can see here's another property opening bid of, of 299,000 it's worth 648 I'm getting a little carried away I have a lot of other areas I want to show you but uh, they're just some pretty nice properties coming up for auction so here's another nice single-family home we can see that it's right on the waterway it's got you know a dock let me zoom in so you guys can see it a little bit better so here's the property we're looking at. You know, it has a backyard pool. Uh, we can see that it has, you know, a nice boat dock. Let's go ahead and look at the street view of this property. So, you know, we're looking at a, a really nice neighborhood here. Here's the property. Now let's just go ahead and see what this property values for. And we can see that this property values for over a million dollars. Uh, and so, you know, even though this property is, has an opening bid amount of three hundred thousand dollars, you know, it's worth nearly a million dollars. And so, even if you were to spend five hundred, you know, let's say you started opening bid of three hundred thousand and bid it up to five hundred thousand, it'd still be five hundred thousand dollars worth of profit to be made. We can see another property here. For sure, another single-family home, six thousand dollar opening bid, fifty-five. $4,000 opening bid, $63, $38,000 opening bid, $74, $4,065, $4,054. All of these properties we can go through and do additional due diligence, and this auction is going to be held online. Now, here's a property down here below with a $52,000 opening bid, and it's worth two, over $2 million. I have to see that just to see what that is. And then we'll go look at some of the other auctions. So we can see that this isn't some type of structured prop. I mean, it is some type of structured property, but it's not a single-family home. We can see it's a, a Team Missions International. We can see that there's some type of photos. So it looks like some type of youth camp of some sort, probably uh, some type of uh, Christian mission or something like that, evangelism, yep. So it's some type of, uh, you know, pretty large uh, a camp of some sort. But could this property have value? Absolutely. Uh, you could sell it to a school, you could sell it to... Uh, 
you know, some type of retreat. There's there's lots of different things you could do with this property, especially when you're looking at that value of over $2 million. Let's go ahead and look at the property records. So we can see that this property is 217 acres. So we're talking about a large property here. We can also see that it sold back in 2006 for 5.9 million and it sold in 1971 for 3.5. So this is a property that's had value, has had value since the 70s. In fact, it was purchased in 2006 and 1971 for quite a bit higher than the assessed value of the property is. So that's, you know, this is an example of uh, Florida online auctions. Let's go ahead and let's look at... Um, Let's look at some additional other properties. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this particular one, but I did want to show you uh, this auction. This auction is taking place tomorrow. So this is an online auction uh, for taxing certificates in Warhees uh, Township in uh, Camden County, New Jersey. Uh, so what we're going to do to review the taxing, so we're going to go ahead and click on Preview Items for Sale. And we can see some of the different taxing certificates that are available. Um, now we can go ahead and click on this right here to pull up uh, the property information, the bidding information. So we can see with this taxing certificate, it has a, a $7,000, $7,700 opening bid. And we can see as of now, uh, there's nine bids on this property, so the auction doesn't start tomorrow, but you can you can pre-bid. So there's already people, nine people that have bidded on this particular taxing certificate, and so of course you know as they bid on that, that's lowering the interest rate down. Uh, let's go ahead and see what this property is. We can see it was built in 1987. Uh, the sales price was 130,000 at the time, uh, and it's a uh, 3.3 acres. We can see that the total value of this property. Is valued at about 177,000. We're going to go ahead and, uh, and as I mentioned before, guys, taxing certificates we're not going to do as much due diligence on, because you're not going to acquire the property. I mean, if you're acquiring the property, then you need to know what am I going to do with it? Am I going to rent it? Am I going to sell it? What's my end game strategy? Uh, but with a taxing certificate, you know, 99% of the time you're just going to get back your interest rate return. So if we look up this property, it looks like it's uh, some type of single family home. We can click on here on the street view, and we can see the property right here. So here's the property right here that we're looking at. So really, with this particular tax lien certificate, it's just a matter of how low are you willing to bid down that interest rate. Are you willing to accept 10%? Then if you are, then you could bid down to 10%. Are you willing to accept 12%? Uh, whatever that bidding amount is, you would bid that tax and certificate down uh, to the value. But when we're looking at a $7,000 tax lien on a property that's worth $177,000, that money is, is, is backed up against a property that's probably worth about two hundred grand on the market. So overall, your investment is safe. That's what makes tax and certificates so safe. Uh, is because the property is always just going to be a small portion of what the actual property value is. So this would be a safe taxing certificate because we're, even though the tax lien is $7,000, almost $8,000, it's valued of, it's, it's against a property valued at 200. So chances are we're probably just going to make our interest rate return. If we look at this property, it looks like it's pretty clean. Uh, we can see that there's uh, a backyard for kids. Uh, and so chances are this property owner is just running a little bit late and they're going to pay off this tax lien uh, before they lose their property. Now when we get to these online auctions, we can we can search by a couple of different things. Um, you know, we can search by the face amount. So if I was to go ahead and click here, we would start with the most expensive tax and certificates, 57000 and then it would go down from there. Now, with this particular tax lien, uh, this particular auction, we can see that there's 13 
uh, pages of tax and certificates. This is just a uh, you know a township, so it's not going to be as large as a county. Uh, New Jersey is a little bit different. They don't have normal county auctions. Uh, what they usually have, counties will have some because they have do have county property, but many of the auctions are going to be held uh, on townships and city levels. The city actually collects the property taxes for that area, and so they'll have their own tax sell. So for this one for 57000 that's a pretty high tax and certificate. Let's go ahead and click on it. And we can see that this property has a value of 461000 uh, so even though this tax and certificate is $57,000, if you're just looking to earn an interest rate return, uh, you know, this would be, probably be a pretty good tax and certificate to purchase if you had that much and you could get it for a good interest rate return. We see the four bidders have purchased it. So maybe let's say that it, you know, started out at $18,000, uh, four bids, they're doing a, you know, a quarter percent. Maybe it's down, and this is just a complete guess. I mean, it, they could do it differently, but maybe it's down. Uh, you know, they're going to each each bid is going to take you down by a quarter, uh, a quarter of a percent. So maybe we're down to 17 percent right now. Uh, and so if you could earn 17 percent for on your $60,000 investment on a property that's worth half a million, uh, that's still going to be a, a pretty safe investment. Now let's go ahead and check out the property and see what if see what it is. So we're going to go ahead and go back to Google maps real quick. We're going to type in that address. And we're going to see the property right here. So it looks to be like a, a pretty nice clean single family home. Now this tax lien certificate is, is a little bit higher even though it's worth more. Uh, and I'm not quite sure exactly why I'm not moving. Let's go ahead and Let's see what Zillow Mark values the property at. So we can see that Zillow values this property at just under uh, 500000 So even though this tax and certificate is higher than it normally should be, I would imagine on a $500,000 property, uh, usually the tax lien would be 20000 something like that 10,000 just depends on the on the property in the area and New Jersey does have higher property taxes so that's something that will always increase uh, the cost of the tax lien but even on a, you know even a $60,000 tax lien against a property that's worth 500,000 uh, you know worst case scenario uh, you know let's say you were just to earn interest rate return well you're making your interest and the property owner pays back and you make your interest rate return. If not, then you're still acquiring a property that's worth you know, a half a million dollars for $60,000. You could still turn around and make you know, $400,000 off the property. Uh, and so even though this tax lien is higher than it normally would be as far as that face, that face value, that face amount, you're still looking at a property that has incredible safety. And that's really the key is, is we're tax is where tax lien and deed investing is that the property has value that we can do something with the property if we record if we uh, if we acquire it so we can see some other tax lien certificates available here uh, 14,000 here's another uh, some type of single-family residential we can see this one's at 14,000 but it's worth 316 so that's a little bit normal that's you know closer to normal as far as what that uh, that bid to bid to value ratio is we can go ahead and quickly view this property. Looks like it's uh, you know a nice uh, single-family home. I believe it's probably this property right in here, right here. And see, it's worth 300 grand. So, you know, is your is is your $15,000 for this tax and certificate is is it a safe investment? Well, if that if that investment is backed by a property, a single family home that's worth 300 grand, and backed by state law, then yes, it's a great investment uh, because you know your money is going to be backed by a great piece of property.
Let's see, we've got a bunch of different questions coming in. Let me go ahead and see if I can answer some of these. Uh, great question. At the conclusion of the sale, do they post the sales price? Uh, yes, many times they, most, well, most times they are going to. Sometimes it may be on the online list. Like, uh, for example, we're, we're going to go look at some uh, some auctions that that uh, happen on bid for assets. After the auction, you'll be able to see the purchase price. Uh, in addition to that, uh, is we were looking at uh, the Florida auctions earlier today, earlier this evening, just a few minutes ago. Uh, if we were to go back and look at an older auction date, we can go through and see what those different properties sold for. Uh, and then also some counties will just have a list of that they're going to do after the auction that has all of the different sales prices. Uh, so with the tax and certificate, it may be a little bit different uh, because you just may be paying off the delinquent taxes uh, and then bidding down the interest rates. And there is premium bid in areas like Colorado where you actually bid up the price of the tax lien. It's a little bit different strategy, and you're going to need to take that in consideration in bidding in one of those areas uh, so that you don't hurt your interest rate if you bid premium bidding bidding too much up uh, but with uh, tax deed investing you're usually going to be bidding up the price it's going to be kind of like an eBay auction you're going to start at a certain price and then you're going to bid up the property uh, until the final bid is established the winner bid requires the property and so we can go back and research uh, different tax sales in fact that's something that I'll do as I'm researching different areas uh, you know, if I'm looking in an area to do tax sale investing or working with a student that's looking into an area, uh, we may go back and review what the, what last year's sale results were because that's going to give us at least maybe an indication of what might happen this next year. Now, that's not always going to be the case. Sometimes you may have an auction one year where there's tons of competition and the next year there isn't, but that's at least going to give us an indication. So that's a great question. In addition to that, what if you don't have, you know, $16,000 to invest, but you want to get started investing in tax liens or uh, tax deeds? Uh, you know, we can go ahead and look at some of these smaller price tax liens. Now we can see that these ones here are actually unavailable and, you know, pretty small tax lien certificates. But let's go ahead and see if there's any tax liens at these lower ones uh, that have some type of value. So with this particular tax lien, uh, it does have a property address. We could look into it, uh, but this $1,800 assessed value, even though it's you know only $144, I'd probably want to do a little bit more research uh, into the property to see. Uh, but I'd probably go ahead and skip over this one. You know, I'm I'm really looking for a property that has you know over $5,000 for a small bit amount. So it has an assessed value, and as most important thing is it's sellable. Uh, so you know, uh, this property may Let's go ahead and look at another one. Okay, now this property here actually has a high value. Uh, it has five bids on it right now, but it's a $178 tax lien on a property that's worth $164,000. Uh, now this actually brings up a good point. Why is uh, there a tax lien on a property that's worth $164,000 that's only $178? Well, there's a good chance this tax lien certificate isn't actually on uh, the property taxes, but on, on some type of sewer and water tax. In some of these areas, uh, the sewer and water taxes uh, will be included in the property taxes or, or will be have a tax lien issued on them, uh, just the same way property taxes won't. They have exactly the same right. In fact, they're just a tax lien for unpaid sewer or water bills. Uh, so it's exactly the same as the property taxes. The same laws apply to it. It really is just a tax lien for delinquent taxes, but that really that tax is unpaid water bill. So just by looking at this, because of the small amount of the face value, uh, I would imagine that this tax and certificate is probably something along that lines. It's possible also it could be uh, that the property owner only you know paid. 95% of their property taxes or 90% of their property taxes and, and maybe paid a smaller amount. So maybe they paid the same amount they had last year, but their property taxes went up a little bit. Or maybe they paid, uh, you know, some of the quarters but didn't pay one of the quarters uh, in the yearly taxes. So there's a few different reasons why, but 
this is obviously a very safe taxing certificate. These property owners are going to pay off that $178,000 before they lose their $164,000 single family home. We can see it's a single family home because residential property built in 1984, uh, 2.1 acres, and then of course the building value and the assessed value. So if we were to go ahead and look this property up, even though this tax lien certificate is a very small amount, it's still going to be against a, a very, very nice property. I can see a nice single family home there. Let's go ahead and look at a couple of more. Here's another nice property. This is again uh, probably property taxes uh, because of this small amount versus the property value on some type of uh, sewer water fees. We can see the uh, Google view there. We can click on there for the larger map if we wanted to. Okay, so here we can see the CCMUA. Uh, if this was property taxes, it, it would say property taxes right there. So this is sewer and water uh, or sewer, some type of sewer bill or something like that uh, that the property owner didn't pay. And that's probably what a lot of these smaller tax liens are. Another, uh, another one very similar. So if you're, you know, a brand new investor and starting out with limited funds, you know, tax lien certificates like these would be would be a, would be a very very safe investment. Uh, you know, $184 and there's there's two bids on this particular tax lien certificate on a property that's valued 110. Now, if you're looking to acquire a property uh, on a low dollar on a low dollar investment amount, then we'd probably not look at, at these type of properties because you know there's 99.9.9% .9 chance that these properties are going to pay off $184 before they lose their $250,000 property. Uh, but if these taxing certificates maybe were on a building lot that was worth 20, that would increase your chance of acquiring the property versus a property that's worth 250. So we can see there's actually quite a few of these uh, sewer water bills. Again, another sewer water bill. Actually, looks like quite a few of these are sewer water bills. But either way, they're earning a great interest rate return. So let's go ahead and check out a few other things. Nope. go ahead and look at uh, some auctions taking place on bid for assets. I know we've already gone over uh, about 20 minutes so I'm going to go ahead and hurry and wrap this up. Uh, I don't want to uh, keep you guys all night so but do I get going through and, and start researching some of these properties and it, uh, time flies. So here's an auction coming up. Uh, it actually starts tomorrow. Uh, this is Ida County, Idaho. So this is going to be the Boise area in Idaho. Um, we can see here that there's 17 tax defaulted properties coming up for auction. Uh, so it's a, a smaller auction, uh, but uh, I figured it, since it was coming up uh, tomorrow as well or two days from now, uh, it would be uh, worth it to go through and review it. So this is a little bit different uh, as far as the auction setup. This is another online auction. This is going to be done through Bid for Assets. Uh, if you're interested in California tax deed investing, you're going to use this website. Uh, also, uh, Washington, uh, for example, Kings County, uh, the Seattle area will do their tax sell investing or their tax uh, sell 
through this website as well. So uh, there's a few different areas and states that will use this website, uh, but California is the primary one that uses it. Uh, in fact, uh, let me go ahead and let's go ahead and go to the county tax sale real quick and you can see uh, some of the different auctions that have taken place so here are some of the auctions that we've already had this month uh, in June you can see all of these different auctions uh, that took place uh, this month and we can see uh, here's uh, the one that we're currently looking at uh, here's a taxing auction happening in July and then August is going to start up in September as well uh, offering different tax liens you can also see this reoffer right here uh, what that means is that the tax sale has already taken place or the original tax sale was already taken place and properties that didn't sell are being resold. Now many times uh, in California the resale is where they'll actually drop the minimum bid amount. Uh, so I've seen resales where the opening bid starts at $100 on every single property or $500 on every single property. Uh, and so you know the, the original opening bid may have been for $5,000, but they're going to start uh, the opening bid at a certain amount, and that's where I've actually seen investors acquire property uh, for, for incredibly great deals in California tax deed auctions. Now, that's not always going to be the case. Sometimes they're just going to re-offer it at that same opening bid amount, uh, but sometimes they will go ahead and do some type of flat opening bid amount for those particular properties. So let's go ahead and go through some of these really quickly. Uh, coming up in Idaho, uh, we can see that we have some different PDFs that we can click on the county terms of the sale. Uh, we can click on the property list in PDF or Excel form. And, and even though this is a small list, I kind of want to show you how I go through and use the quick glance method in reviewing property. So here we're looking at uh, this tax sale list, and we're going to see you know the auction ID number and also each one of these auction ID numbers are going to have a link that we can click on uh, to pull up the property records that makes it nice uh, we can see the APN parcel number the legal description uh, the minimum bid amount the auction end date there we go ahead and have the property address uh, the community so that's going to be the area the city zip code the acreage uh, we also see uh, the improvement value, the land value, and then uh, if we continue, there's just additional information. Uh, we see the land value, uh, the total assessed value, uh, the tax bill, the tax rate, the zoning code, zoning type. We can see if there's any IRS liens, and then any additional information. Uh, so that's going to give us additional clues. And we see this one here, land only manufactured home is not included in sell. So as I'm going through this list, even though there's quite a bunch of information, what we're really going to be doing is we're going to be looking at that minimum bid amount versus the assessed value. Uh, and then, of course, the, additionally, the property address can give us some additional clues. Uh, so if I'm looking at this first taxing certificate, you know, looking at a $4,000 opening bid, I can see that it does have an address and the assessed value versus maybe this taxing certificate down here where we see that uh, it's just North Cedar Avenue. So it is on some type of street, but they don't have a particular address for that property. And so e this list is a little bit large. Usually it's going to be as far as the information, the legal description is massive. They put the full legal description. Uh, sometimes in these online lists, you're not going to have that. Uh, but what we can do is go through and review each one of these properties based on that minimum bid amount. So if I have between five dollars to $10,000 to invest, then I could go ahead, and, let's just say I have $5,000 to invest, then I could go ahead and look for properties that uh, you know are within that $5,000. If there's a property that goes above that $5,000, like this one for $7,000, I may not look at that property because it's above what I have to pay, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time researching that property. So let's go ahead and go back to this online list. Here's the online list here below. So those were the... Uh, the Excel list, there's also a PDF list, and we're going to go ahead and click here below, and it's going to pull up the online list. So we're going to see these are the different properties 
there's really not a lot of information, just has the, the parcel number uh, right there. So we're going to have to click on each one of these. We can see that opening minimum bid amount for $4,200. Uh, bids increase $100 at a time. Now as I scroll down, I'm going to see additional information. I'm going to have the property address. I'm going to see that this property has a land value of $33,500, but it doesn't have any type of improvement value, uh, which tells me it's some type of, of lot. And we can see this 0.17 acres. Uh, we can go ahead and click here on the parcel image. And we can see here is uh, the the property. Now we did notice in those notes before that the mobile home is not included. Uh, that's probably because they somehow have the mobile home listed underneath uh, personal. Uh, many times, depending on the type of property in the area, uh, the mobile home will be included in the sale. If we click on the evaluation, we can see what this property has gone up or down in value uh, over the last 10 years. We can click on the task districts. We can also click on the taxes. And this is where we can see, uh, you know, where the property owners were, the property owner was paying his property taxes or her property taxes. Then we can see in 2011 uh, they are delinquent. So you know, the first year was 874 they didn't pay. The next 2012 was uh, 1,151. Uh, 2013 was 834. 2014 was 620. Uh, and it, th these combined delinquent taxes, in addition with the uh, with any fees that are included, is what's going to come up with this opening bid amount of four thousand two hundred and twenty. Let's go ahead and look at this next property. See, it has a thirty one hundred dollar opening bid amount. So we can see that there's an improvement value and a land value. Now, if we were to go ahead and click on that, we can see here's this property here. Uh, it's some type of mobile home property. Uh, we could take this address and we could search it on uh, kind of just going through the same process. And this is going to be the process that you're going to go through. Now, what we're doing right now is really kind of the the primary, or not the primary, but the, the starting due diligence. So with tax and certificate investing, once I've gone through and fully reviewed the tax lien records, uh, the property records, I've reviewed uh, information as far as what the properties are selling for within that area, uh, looked at uh, Google Earth and, and some of the other online features, I can make a pretty good decision, well, this is a tax and certificate that I want to purchase because, you know, chances are I'm just going to make my interest rate return off the property. Uh, now, with tax deed investing, of course, I'm going to go into additional due diligence, and that's something that's really a, uh, one or two other webinars, uh, you know, a couple of other hours of training just to go through all of that process as far as, uh, uh, you know, doing on-site evaluations, speaking with a real estate agent, uh, purchasing the property, tax deed sell, and then in addition to that, you're also going to have the exit strategies. So with tax deed investing, you really need to look at that as a as a real estate investor. With tax and certificate investing, it's going to take a lot less work as far as going researching property, evaluating property, uh, because really your exit strategy most of the time is going to be making an interest rate return. Then if there's a chance that you do acquire a property, uh, as long as you've purchased good tax and certificates, then it's just going to be you know really like hitting, hitting the lottery uh, because you're going to be able to acquire property uh, for a small percentage of its property that property uh, value and you're able to you know make a massive return at that point uh, and so you know with tax deed investing is, is going to take more due diligence and what we're kind of doing now is we're just going through and getting some of that basic information so if, if we're interested in this this uh, at a county sale then we're going to go through and we're going to do some of this big basic information see what the property's valued at see uh, the property records and then if we're interested then we're going to do additional due diligence so that we're prepared when we attend the auction. I've never seen an investor lose any money uh, that, that wasn't prepared. The only way you can lose money in tax lien or tax deed investing is if you purchase tax liens or tax deeds on terrible pieces of property without value. You know if you purchase a, a, a tax deed on uh, um, a piece of land out in the middle of Arizona that has nothing but rattlesnakes and sagebrush and doesn't have any value, well then that's not going to be a good investment, uh, you know, because you might acquire that property. If you purchase a tax lien there, you might acquire it, and then what are you going to do with it if it only has a value of 
you know, let's say $500. Uh, on the other hand, if you purchase a property that does have value, uh, then there's always something you can do with the property. You can always turn around and sell it. There's always going to be some type of exit strategy for you to not only get back your money, but also make a good return. Let's go ahead and see if we can pull this property up. So we can see that this property is valued at 97,000. Um, it looks like a lot of the properties are valued in the 90 there. Uh, I would probably think that that's a little bit high, but it looks like a lot of them are. So, uh, of course, we are looking at Boise, which has a pretty high real estate market. So, of course, when we're looking at a tax and certificate with an opening bid of three thousand dollars you know overall this looks like it would be a pretty good property that we could do additional due diligence on so we can see this is just some type of uh, you know building lot just a bit of time looking at that another one Here's a good example uh, of a property that you wouldn't want to purchase. We can see here's a property with a $525 minimum bid amount. We can see the information down here below, and we can see it's point zero point zero two acres. So we're talking about a very small piece of land. You know, we probably couldn't, you know, we couldn't build a home on it. We couldn't do anything like that. And it has a land, it has a value of $600. So this would be a tax certificate that you wouldn't purchase. You know, you're looking at a property that even if we were to say it has a value of, of $1,000, big deal if you're paying $525 for it. This would be an example of a tax lease or tax deed you wouldn't want to purchase. Uh, and so as long as you don't purchase properties like this, uh, which you're not going to do, just be in, on the phone call this evening, you know, tax lien and tax deed investing is really the best strategy for not only acquiring property, but earning interest rate returns on your money. So here's one for $17,937. We can see the address right here. And we can see that the improvement value is $179,000. The land value is $64,000 for a total value of $244,000. Let's go ahead and click here. And we can see that this is a, a, a pretty nice uh, single family home. So is this, you know, ask yourself a question, is this property right here with an assessed value of, uh, what was it, $250,000, is your, is your money protected for, you know, a seventeen dollars or a $20,000 opening bid? Well, I would say, you know, yes, definitely, because you're looking at a valuable piece of property here. Uh, let's go ahead and take that address. And let's see what Zillow values this property as. Oh, wow. I'm really going over this evening. We'll go ahead and finish this up. And really, guys, this is the process that you're going to want to go through yourself, even if you don't plan on it bidding at the auction. Try going through and researching some of these properties. You know, try a couple of different online auction sites or uh, take one of these tax lists that are coming up and go through and do a partial search tool. Use the partial search tool and review those county records as you go through and review different tax and certificates. So we see this nice single family home, estimated 272000 uh, You know, overall a great piece of property. We can see that, you know, at one time, we see that the property has gone up and gone down, and we can see that it's starting to go back up in value, uh, which is common. And we can see that in 2011, they quit paying their property taxes. 
So they didn't pay 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, and that's what comes up with that $17,000 opening bid amount is, you know, these delinquent property taxes that they haven't paid. Then, of course, we can see here that there's also an interactive map on the property. Uh, we could go ahead and click on that uh, if we were interested. And the maps are especially going to be helpful in determining, you know, where those lot lines are going to lie. Uh, so we can see the property right here. We could use some of these additional tools to do additional research on the property. So let me go ahead and, uh, you know, I had a couple of other areas, but we've really just run out of time. Let me go ahead and answer a couple of questions. Okay, how how uh, how quickly must the high bidder pay for the property of the tax deed sale? Uh, how quickly must the high bidder pay for the property of the tax deed sale? Uh, great question. It's really going to depend on the on, on the county, uh, but I would say that you need to have those funds really available immediately. Uh, for example, you know, I over the last couple of months have purchased properties in Florida, and so with those particular tax uh, those tax sales, I do it online. So I'm going to have a deposit, uh, and that's usually going to be about five percent of uh, of the purchase price. Uh, and so uh, that'll automatically be paid immediately, and then within 24 hours of the auction, I have to wire the additional the additional money. Uh, some some auctions will require you to pay at the end of the sale. So as soon as that auction you know takes place, like if I was to as I attended uh, our local tax deed auction here last month, those properties had to be purchased at the end of the auction. So you had to have the cash on hand. But the good thing is we can always figure out that information beforehand. That's going to be in the auction rules and the auction information. So we're going to know exactly uh, how quickly we need to have our funds. Uh, and so, you know, if they have a 24-hour period, then we know we need to have those funds within 24 hours. Uh, if they require them, you know, within an hour after the sale, if it's some type of live sale, uh, then within that case, we're going to need to make sure we have our bank close or a way uh, to be able to use those funds. Uh, to be able to purchase the properties. And so uh, it's a great question. It's something that's going to vary. There is other areas where, you know, they'll give you more time than that. Uh, you know, you, you pay that deposit and then you have a week. But usually uh, it's going to be required within that day. Uh, and so that's something you, you can look at it through the auction rules on any of the different auctions. And that's something that's going to be uh, pretty pretty clearly laid out by the county. They're going to, you know, they're going to have that as one of their uh, information and their question and answers or their rules or, or as you go through and review, review the auction, that's something that you're going to know beforehand so that you're going to be able to be prepared for it. Uh, great question. Um, how can you make a consistent monthly income from tax liens if you have to wait one to two years? Uh, well, with tax and certificate investing, you know, you, you're not necessarily looking at making a monthly income uh, unless you have a lot of funds to be able to invest in the tax lien certificates. Then you're going to have tax liens that are redeeming throughout the year. Um, but as far as tax and certificates, you're really looking at it as a, as a, a longer term interest rate return strategy. Uh, and so, you know, there's different ways that you can shorten down that redemption period. I mean, if you're just purchasing tax lien at the auction, it could have a two, it could have a three, uh, it could have even up to a five-year redemption period. Uh, when I purchase tax and certificates in Wyoming each year, you know, those tax and certificates have a four-year redemption period. So with those particular tax liens, I just purchase them and, and sit back and wait. Uh, now, as far as, as far as strategies with tax lien investing, there's different strategies that can help you ensure that you get your money back in a shorter period of time. Uh, for example, with our secondary mar market tax liens that are available to our students, uh, those taxing certificates we purchase past the redemption period. 
which means that when we're going through and we're, and we're looking at uh, different portfolios from banks uh, that purchase tax and certificates, we're looking for taxes that are past their redemption period so the property owner can collect on that whenever they want. If they want to sit back and wait a year, then they can wait a year before they collect on it. Uh, if they would like to collect on it uh, sooner than that, then they have the ability because it's past the foreclosure period. It's past the redemption period. If you were to purchase a tax and certificate just at the auction, you're going to have to wait whatever that redemption period is. So in Florida, it's two years. You would have to wait two years from the day that you purchased the tax and certificate before you could start the foreclosure. In Arizona, it's three years. You would have to wait three years. So if you want to shorten that period, then you're going to be either be purchasing over the counter or you're going to be purchasing secondary market tax liens where that redemption period is shortened so that you can start the foreclosure process quicker or immediately depending on the tax and certificate. Uh, in addition to that, let me go ahead and – so uh, really with tax and certificates, you're not going to be – earning a monthly income uh, you know you may have the you may purchase a tax lien and the property owner pays back three months or you may wait until the end of the redemption period it really just depends on on each individual tax and certificate so it's really more of a a, a, a longer term uh, way to to really earn a higher higher interest rate return on your money that's going to be backed against a, a great piece of property I mean you know if you have money in stocks or something like that, uh, in fact, I, I tell the story about uh, one of one of my family members uh, that over the last ten years has really lost half of their half of their savings uh, in in the most conservative stocks that they could uh, after 9/11 and some of those things that happened. Uh, you know, the, even though that they were invested in some of the very most conservative stocks, they continued to lose money uh, in in the in the stock market uh, and so finally now they're investing in tax and certificates where they're guaranteed that that interest rate return so if you know you're earning an 18 percent you're earning 18 uh, percent until that property owner redeems but you're not going to be receiving a check each month uh, you're going to receive your funds once the property owner pays back the county and they in turn pay you then you're going to make back your money and your interest rate return on on top of it. So if you're looking for a residual income, now I guess I get I guess I could say if you did acquire a property, then you could make residual income by renting out the property. But if you're really looking for a monthly residual income or a monthly uh, income, then really tax deed investing is the way to look because that way you can acquire a property immediately and then start renting the property out to, to earn to earn income. Uh, for example, um, I'm not sure if you guys all saw the, the two properties that I purchased last month. Uh, one of the properties, we are turning around and doing a quick flip on the property. With that property, we're just going to make you know a lump sum. With the other property, um, we're going to be renting the property out. Uh, and so, uh, you know, it's going to be renting out at about $900 a month. We spend about $10,000 for the property. So the property is really going to pay for itself within that first year. And then after that, we're going to be making, you know, 900 bucks a month each month, um, making residual income off, off, off of the property. So another great question. Uh, is a federal tax lien a big problem? Uh, great question. It's not something that you're going to see very often. Uh, in fact, uh, very rarely do I see if there's a federal tax lien. Uh, usually that, that tax lien will either be uh, included in the tax sale or they'll just go ahead and take the property off. Uh, with an IRS lien, um, that's something that you could occasionally see. Uh, with an IRS lien, the IRS has a 90-day has a period to uh, to really redeem the property and if they do redeem the property then they're going to have to pay you back uh, your interest rate return uh, or interest rate on the property uh, if not then uh, that that IRS lien will will go ahead and fall off the property after that time so uh, there's a, a pretty a pretty structured process with properties that do have some type of liens where the where the government needs to step in beforehand but usually something uh, like an IRS lien or a federal tax lien is going to go against a person and not necessarily a property uh, the property is just going to be an asset that they owned but once they go through the tax deed foreclosure those notices are sent out to anyone that has a position in the property and they have the time frame to respond uh, before the foreclosure uh, 
to to take care of that. Uh, the only thing that would be a, the only thing that could change from that would be some type of IRS lien, and then the IRS would if you know need to respond within the timely within a timely frame uh, if they want to try to acquire the property. But in most cases, um, it's not something that they're going to pursue, and you'll just go ahead and, and uh, become the property's owner. Looks like we have uh, some other questions, but we've, we've almost gone two hours now. Uh, so I want to go ahead and uh, thank you guys for attending the webinar this evening. Uh, hopefully you've learned something. Uh, hopefully uh, you've got a little bit excited. We've su seen some, some pretty nice properties coming up for auction. We've seen some nice taxing certificates. Uh, and if you're, you know, if you're really looking to get started in tax sale investing, really now is the best time. Uh, there's, there's just so much opportunity, and with the online auctions now, you can, you can purchase tax certificates from the comfort of your own home. You can purchase tax deeds. You can research property. Uh, let's say that you live in California, but you have a, a brother that lives in Florida. Well, you could have that brother go out and research area or property within that area. They could even attend the tax sale for you. So there's so many different strategies and ways to make money in tax lien investing. Uh, I have some investors I was speaking with today that are just primarily looking to uh, turn over retirement accounts. They have you know, a, an old 401k that they had at their old job uh, that's, that's not really making them anything. Maybe it's making 3% a year uh, in some type of, of mutual funds or stocks. Well, they're going to turn those over to a self-directed account and just invest into secondary market tax liens. Uh, because you know our secondary market tax liens are, are some of the premium tax liens in the country uh, that they can purchase for just the current cost of the tax lien um, as as a member of the website. And so with those type of tax and certificates, they're not going to have to spend time attending the auction or bidding down the price of the tax lien. Uh, and if it redeems, for example, if you were to purchase a tax lien certificate in Arizona at the auction and it redeemed three or four months into the tax lien certificate, you're not going to have the ability unless you found an over-the-counter or purchased a tax lien in another area just to reinvest that money into a tax lien certificate uh, to a new tax lien. With secondary market tax liens, we're always looking for new inventory, so we're always purchasing new uh, inventory. You know, we purchased a $10 million batch of tax lien certificates from Connecticut uh, three months ago, and we've pretty much cleared out all of those Connecticut tax liens. We have just a couple of left. Uh, we just purchased a new batch of Florida tax and certificates on uh, the mall properties. Uh, and so these mall properties are, are mall condos uh, that are being for, that are uh, that have tax and certificates, and we have the first position lien. So with these particular tax and certificates, uh, they need to be foreclosed on really immediately. Uh, and so you know, over the next week or two, we'll be able to assign those to our to our students and investors that would like to purchase them. And then after that time, as a company, we'll just go ahead and foreclose on them ourselves because they're at their end of their redemption period. Uh, they're already past their redemption period, and, and they're at the end of the life of lien, which means that we need to start the foreclosure process pretty quickly uh, so that we can go ahead and send it to the auction. So when once we foreclose on the tax and certificate, uh, we're we're going to be required to pay off any additional taxes on the property. Uh, and so we have that first position year, but we may need to pay the second, the third, and the fourth year tax lien certificate so that we own all tax liens on the property. And then we go ahead and fill out the foreclosure application or the deed application with the county, and the county will foreclose on the property. The county will foreclose on the property, and they're going to go ahead and put it up for a tax deed auction like we were looking through some of the tax deed sales today. All of those tax deeds that we saw uh, were owned uh, those tax liens were owned by some investor. Uh, the investor held on to the tax and certificate until the redemption period was over, and then they they went ahead and filed an application, a tax deed application with the county, and the county foreclosed on the property. Uh, and so before the property goes to auction, there's a couple of ways that the investor is going to get paid it back. Uh, if the property uh, before the property goes to auction, if the homeowner or the property owner goes in and pays off the delinquent taxes, then they're going to earn an interest rate return on their money. Uh, and, and one of the reasons banks purchase so many tax lien certificates in, in Florida is because if you, uh, if you fill out the deed application, you're going to get 18% on 
all of the money that you invested into the delinquent taxes. So any tax lien that you purchased, you're going to make 18%. Even if that tax lien was only bid down to 5%, we'll see the banks bid down these tax lien certificates to 5%. Well, they know they're either going to make you know that interest rate off their money, or if they go to the foreclosure process and foreclose on the tax lien, they're going to go ahead and make 18% off their off their entire amount of money that they paid for those tax lien certificates. And so with these particular mall tax liens, you know, we're really looking at six months uh, to a year at the very at the very top. But I would probably estimate about six months uh, as far as the foreclosure process. And so they're going to be making 18% of their money, and within six months, they're either going to acquire a uh, a mall property in in downtown in you know in Miami, Florida, right next to the airport, uh, in the DoubleTree Hotel, or they're going to make 18% on their money. So uh, overall, it's it's a great way uh, to get uh, to invest. Looks like somebody might be having a problem with audio, but uh, let's go ahead and. Uh, close the webinar we've been going for a couple of hours this evening uh, go ahead and let me know if you have any questions uh, also be sure to go to property tax list I mean excuse me secrets of tax and investing dot com uh, and uh, get on the website we're gonna we're actually adding quite a few new auction lists this week uh, we probably have about a hundred new auction lists to add to the to the website and uh, we have all kinds of tools available for you so again thank you for attending the webinar I appreciate you guys being with me this evening uh, you guys are troopers. We spent a couple of hours going through property, going through uh, auctions, and I appreciate you guys. So uh, thank you for attending the webinar and look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you and have a great day.